in this video, we'll be exploring the last part of a CRUD framework, which is the updating portion. Now we are able to list our notes, we're able to delete them, and we're able to create them as well. In this video, we'll finally be able to update an individual note instead of just deleting it whenever we find that there is a mistake in the note. So moving on to the code, let's add another route that will basically allow us to update our notes. So let's have an individual ID that we'll be updating. So we'll identify our individual note with its ID. So if we have the ID, we can extract the information for that particular note. And we'll use the note form component as well, but we'll try to modify it in such a way that we can uh, accommodate creating and updating in the same form. Now let's just make the URL a bit similar so that we have the same path for these create and update and I'll change this in the home page as well. So now moving on to our note form, we have to make certain changes in order to be able to update a note for the same component. Now the reason that we need that is because we don't need to write another component that will basically have the same boilerplate because we'll need the title, we'll need the description, and we need a save button. So we can just reuse this component and then just add a few tweaks to it to accommodate both create and update. The way we can identify that is through the ID because that was our way to determine if this is a create form or if it's an update form. So if it's a create form, we don't expect an ID because we're creating a completely different note. But if it's an update form we do expect an ID to be passed through the URL in our component did mount method so before mounting this component let's just determine if it's a create form or an update form so in order to identify the query parameter passed through this to this component we just need to extract the params in the props that has been supplied through the react router DOM so once we do this we basically are supplied with the ID in the form of an object where the key is the ID and the value is the individual ID that has been supplied to it. Awesome. So let's store the ID in a variable. And if we have the ID, we'll do something. Basically, we'll have to reset the state. So in our create form, the title and the description is usually empty. But if it was an update form, the title and the description would have an existing title and description of a note. So in order to do that, we have to fetch that individual note with the ID. So we have to create a node service dot get endpoint, which will have a similar URL as the remove endpoint, but it will be a get endpoint. And in our home page, we'll basically pass our note ID. And then once that's done, we have the note. Now, how does this note look like? Let's see this in action through the browser. So we know the URL. We can just basically paste the ID in the URL that the same way we did in the service and we get the note in the form of an object. Great, so we can basically directly set the state where if we destruct this object, which has the I title and the description, I can just set the state with the title and the description of the existing note. So the title and the description will not be empty. It will have the existing notes, title and description. Great. So now that we have done that, we still need to make additional changes. Right now, the note will still be empty. So we need to have an initial value set to the input. So the way we do that is just supply the value prop and in the value prop will have the states, title and description. And we get this title and description from by destructuring it from the this.state variable. Great, so this is still not done. We're still just only fetching the existing node using the ID. We now need to connect this. We basically need to add an event handler where if we click on this card, it will take us to the node edit pick. We'll make this a link function or a link um, wrapper and uh, we'll enclose this whole thing inside a link. And since we have the context of node.id, this will take us to slash notes. We have the node.id. Great, so if we click on this div, it should take us to the node.id. Now let's see this in action. Oh, everything got linked, but let me just see if it works. 
Awesome. So once I click an individual card, I have the URL that's changed and it's a update form that's rendered. Well, I'll change this based on the node ID and we have the node existing tile and description rendered. So let's change this design a bit. So if we add a link component, if we enclose a component with a link, it basically adds an A anchor tag to it. So if you check in the inspect, you'll see that this is an anchor tag here. So we'll just basically change the design of the anchor tag so that it does not have this blue um, color to it. So let's just go to the index.css and color black and text decoration, none. Let's see if this works. Well, it does work, but on hover, we have the blue, but that's all right because we do need to know that this can be clickable on hover. So that's fine by me. Great, so now that we are done with clicking this, now the only thing that's left is the submit action. So once you submit, we want to determine if it should be a create or if it should be an update. So if it's a, if we have the node ID supplied to it, because that's how we're determining that it's a create or update form, we're just gonna call a different function. So the same way we identify the note ID, we'll just copy this part out in the on submit and paste it here. And then if we have a note ID, we'll call the ser the note service dot update. Now we still don't have that function yet. We just need to write that. So it will be similar to the get. Again, the URL will be similar at least. We'll call it update, and we need the ID and the payload, the updated payload. This will be an update. We have the payload and everything remains the same. Now we go back to our component, supply the required parameters. So note ID and the title, title description. And once that's complete, we do the same thing as we are doing for the create phase, which is we'll just go back to the home page. And this will be in an else block so that we we do either of these. So um, let's also change this part because the way we it, it gets confusing if we don't know what if it's a create form or an update form. So if we have the note ID, we'll call it update note, or else we'll just call it add note or create, whichever is preferable to you. And uh, let's also do one thing. Let's add a cancel button because um, it gets hard to determine if we want to. We just have to manually press the back button to go back to our home page. So let's add an on cancel handler and uh, this will be light, a light button. And let's write the on cancel function. The on cancel will basically do this. We'll just go to the home page. Let's bind this as well. Let's see how our form looks like. So we go there. Yep, we get a cancel button. We get the update node. And if I try to update this and save it, oops, I'm getting an error. So let me just check this out. So I've just made a really silly mistake. So there's no such thing as an update. We'll just call it put. It's a put endpoint because I'm just calling it update from the CRUD operation. Great. So if I edit this, Hit save. Great, it takes me back to the home page and it has been edited as well. Now there's one thing that we have to note is that now that we've made this whole thing clickable, if, if you notice the hover link also appears on the delete button as well. Now this will be a big problem. So once I hit delete, it will take me, try to take me to the note. And if I go back, I'll see that it has been deleted as well. So in order to get rid of this problem, all we have to do is we need to stop the event from prop propagating inside the delete button. So in my home page, I have the delete function. I'll have to also make sure that the event does not, event also prevents the default, which is um, whatever I get from the parent. So the parent div has a link function and we also have to stop this from propagating. Great, so now moving on to the node, let's refresh this and hit delete. It just deletes. And if I click here, it just takes me to the node. Great, so we are done with the update portion. Since we're done with the app, in the next video, we'll be exploring React Unit Test.